Welcome to Psalm 32. Blessed is whose sin is forgiven. Psalmos to David, Sinesios, Makari on Aphethison, E Anomie, Ke on Epicali, Thison, E Amartie, Makarios, Anir, O Umi, Logisite, Kyrios, Amartian, Ude Estin in Tostomati of two, Tholos. A psalm attributed to David for understanding. Well, that could be for every title, for every psalm, because we definitely need understanding. Understanding uh, what's going on in our lives, understanding the world, what's going on in the world, understanding what God wants for us. So we'll find out what that is. It begins with a quote of Romans 4. Uh, 7 and 8. Blessed are whom the lawless deeds and whom sins were covered, uh, were forgiven, whose lawless deeds were forgiven, and whom sins were covered over. Blessed is a man in whom in no way the Lord should impute sin. Well, that's true. Then blessed are uh, if we are forgiven. A lot of people don't even ask for forgiveness. They just continue doing bad things, evil things, sin, lawless deeds, and all these things. And they could care less. But then there are the ones of us that do care. We realize that what we are doing is not what God wants. Those are lawless deeds, breaking the laws. You can break a law of a country. Uh, It's not the same as breaking God's law. But... Uh, sins in whom were uh, the sins, whom the sins were covered over. And everybody sins, and the whole Bible is all about sin for sure. And the New Testament, and then next, blessed is a man in whom in no way the Lord should impute sin. The Old Testament people here, they only had uh, sacrifices through a priesthood that they could do to cover over their sin. But the sin still remains. You're still sinning. But this is what God had to cover over the sin for a a forgiveness. With us, the uh, sacrifice is not an animal, but uh, the belief in Jesus Christ. And we know that when we do that, then uh, we will not, sin will not be imputed to us. Now, this was quoted, it was used by Paul in Romans 4, uh, 7 and 8, but it starts in verse 1. What then shall we say, that Abraham our father was found according to the flesh? Now, means as far as God accepting him. For if Abraham was justified from out of works, uh, works of the flesh, he has boasting. But not towards God, because he basically is doing it himself. But what does the scripture say? And Abraham trusted in God, or believed in God, if you will, for this word. And it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, he believed. Now, exactly uh, all the things in the belief, we have to go back to Genesis. But uh, we'll leave it as it is and just uh, uh, accept that, that this is what Abraham did, some trusting and somehow was able to make him bring righteousness to him. Now, to the one working, the wage is not considered according to favor, but according to the debt. Because if you're working and you get paid so much for an hour, it's not somebody's not doing you a favor, they're, they're paying you. But to the one not working, but trusts upon the one justifying the impious one, his trust is imputed for righteousness. That would be us trusting uh, upon uh, the one justifying us. This trust is imputed for righteousness. This, the man's trust, just as also David says about the blessing of the man to whom God imputes righteousness, which we just read in 
Psalm 32, separate from works, saying, Blessed are whom the lawless deeds were forgiven, and whom the sins were covered over. Blessed is a man in whom in no way the Lord should impute sins. Uh, and then he goes in, is this blessing there upon circumcision only the Jews, or also upon the uncircumcision? Us. For we say that a belief was imputed to Abraham uh, for our righteousness, our trust. How then was it imputed? And it goes on, we're not studying all that. We're in the psalm. So this is a quotation that Paul uses. And then it continues, uh, nor, then he adds in, in the psalm, is, nor is treachery in his mouth, in the person's mouth. They're uh, not, uh, they don't have treachery against man or God. For I kept quiet. My bones were grown old from my crying out the entire day. Now, David is uh, justifying himself or explaining where he's at, more or less, I suppose. For I kept quiet, and my bones were grown old from crying out the entire day. Now, in crying out the entire day, it sounds like he had a lot of problems going on in his life, and I suppose being a king over a country with many people, you would have. For day and night, your hand presses upon me. So, not only the people, but trying to do the right thing uh, with God. And we also try to do the right thing with God, but again, sin gets involved and uh, causes us not to do that. And he says, I was turned uh, to misery by the thorn sticking me. Now, that's an interesting, 32.4. Where was a thorn sticking David? Well, it may have been, but it all mentions in John 19.2, and the soldiers, having plaited a crown of thorns, placed it upon his head. And that is Jesus um, had the thorn sticking him. Now, is that a portent of Jesus? It could very well be, because so many places in the Bible that are portents to Jesus in the future. My lawlessness I have made known, and my sin I did not cover, and the sin, basically, the biggest sin he had was taking Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba, and then having him put to death. Uh, and that was a sin that was made known. I said, I will declare openly against myself my lawlessness to the Lord. Declaring openly, that's, a, that's a, um, not an easy thing to do. If you have a sin in your life, you don't want other people to know what it is and to declare it openly that you have sinned uh, my, against the Lord uh, and you forgave the impiety of my heart. And I suppose we could all do the same thing as David, uh, declare our sin openly. In the New Testament, it talks about um, t telling others our uh sins or our um, unrighteousness of things, problem, problem areas that we have, and that they would pray for us. We all have these problem areas. I have a problem area, and I uh, pray that God uh, would forgive the impiety of my heart. Uh, the sins, there's the sins of the flesh and the sins of uh, your thought process of attitude, all sorts of uh, sins. Uh, for this, every sacred one shall pray to you in a fit time, which we can at any time uh, uh, ask the Lord to acknowledge to him our sin and ask for the forgiveness that comes through Jesus Christ. And I'm sure he will honor that and we live our lives for Jesus Christ and for God and love God. I think that's a very important thing. I woke up this morning thinking about God. I mean, I, I, mean, I was thinking, well, you know, does God uh, ever feel, uh, you know, 
wanting somebody to love him. Is there some type of a need in God that he would uh, want a love? And do I love God? And I love him, but do I love God because of only what he does good for me? Or I do, love, do I love God because he is God? And I know that many bad things are going to happen, but yet I know that he loves me by sending the Lord, and I love him. And even though uh, he loves me through thick and thin, isn't it just uh, righteous for us to love God through thick and thin, not only through the thick, which everything is going our way, but for the thin times when we're having problems. And then he continues, only in a cataclysmo, a cataclysm, a flood uh, of waters, uh, many shall not approach to you. Now I'm trying, trying to figure out, well, where is that? Where uh, a flood of waters Waters could be very well here a um, metaphor for problems. Only in a flood of waters, many shall not approach to you. You are my refuge from affliction encompassing me. So again, uh, David has an affliction encompassing him, and uh, Deb Paul mentions a, a thorn in his flesh. Well, a lot of people think it was his eyes, but he says it was us. A um, uh, an angel from Satan to buffet him, and so I don't think it was his eyes. I think that some thing from Satan that was buffeting him constantly, causing him a some side of a some sort of a problem uh, that he with him between him and God that he didn't want, and he asked if it would be taken, and God said, "My uh, grace is sufficient for you." So uh, the. And the, you're our refuge from the affliction encompassing me. My leap for joy to ransom me from the ones encircling me. And they, he, the ransom could be a giving of money to get them out or a miraculous way that God would ransom somebody that was going to be taken by the enemy, but he gets them out. Pause. Diopsoma. Now, Here it changes a little, and I was trying to figure out, now, who is the I and who is the you? I will bring understanding uh, to you, uh, are you, I will bring bring understanding of you, for you. Uh, Now, who is the I? Is it um, David is going to bring understanding, or is it God? Is going to bring the understanding, or uh, someone else uh, that wrote this, or uh, again, is this a portent of Jesus? And I will instruct you in this way in which you shall go. Well, I don't, God, of course, uh, can do these things, but I suppose David, in a way, the instructions of David through the Psalms, or whoever's writing these uh, Psalms, but under, in, in this way in which you shall go, I will instruct you in this way in which you shall go. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we mentioned so many places that the way, was early Christians were called the way. I will stay my eyes upon you. Well, I don't see David doing that. Of course, God, but I think Jesus fits the, 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 the eighth uh, verse of 38. Now, it doesn't mean it, every other place is all Jesus, but I believe this is a portent of Jesus. And then it says, do not become as a horse and mule in which there is not an understanding. Well, you may think your horse has understanding. <laughs> I suppose it has a certain amount. Uh, to squeeze their jaws by muzzle and bridle of the ones not approaching to you. Uh, do not become as a horse that you would need someone to squeeze you and force you. Many are the whips for the sinner. Well, who wants whips? I don't, and I sin, but, uh, boy, I deserve the whip, but the Lord has mercy on us. 
There it is. But mercy shall encircle the one hoping upon the Lord. Now, you can still deserve the whip and be a sinner, but you're hoping upon the Lord puts you in a different category, I believe. And uh, God acknowledges the hope of a person. Then, to me, the hope is in Jesus Christ, that he is the righteous one. My righteousness doesn't get me anywhere, but the righteousness of Christ uh, does. And so I put my hope on Jesus Christ. Uh, there's a song, I hope my love... And Put Jesus' blood and righteousness. Uh, solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Be glad upon the Lord and exalt, O just ones, and that's us, to be glad in the Lord and, O just ones, and justified by Jesus Christ, and let all the straight in heart uh, boast. Mm boast in the Lord, not in their righteousness. Psalm 33. Oh, the word of the Lord is upright. Oh, the word of the Lord. I love the word of the Lord. Psalm 33, next video seminar. Hope you'll join us. Till then, God bless.